What's up everybody, I'm Jason and welcome back to the channel. So this video is going to be a little bit different from the usual tips and tricks. I'm going to be talking about something that I ran into completely unexpectedly. Um, it's not something that's tremendously important from a photographic sense, but I thought it was interesting and so I decided I was going to talk about it since uh, I have spent way too much time dealing with this. So we're going to be talking about shutter speeds today and specifically an implementation detail on Canon's cameras for the shutter speeds that the that you have as a Canon shooter. Here's the deal. Uh, you know the shutter speeds we all know and love, you know, things like a 30th and a 4,000th. Well, it appears that Canon doesn't actually use those shutter speeds on their cameras. Uh, they use shutter speeds that are very close to those shutter speeds, so it's not like they're doing something completely weird and different or wrong or something, anything like that. Uh, so what Canon actually appears to be doing on their cameras is using powers of two to get the shutter speeds. So two to a positive uh, exponent give, uh, from zero and up actually gives you of whole numbers. So that would be your shutter speeds of like one second, two seconds, four seconds, eight seconds, and so on. Two to a negative exponent gives you a fractional shutter speed. So again, that would be like half, quarter, eighth, and, and so on and so forth. Now, outside of the range that I just talked about, the shutter speeds then start to deviate slightly from the traditional values. Now, I keep trying, I, I keep batting around the bush. I want to call them traditional values or, or normal values or whatever. Uh, but the reality is, is that they're not exactly right. So it's not right to call them the correct shutter speeds because if you go and you stop and look at the shutter speeds that you actually work with, uh, there's a whole bunch of places where things aren't right. The, they're close, they're good enough, but they're not a perfect progression through the shutter speed range in stops. And that is something that actually falls out of what Canon's doing. So Canon actually maintains proper one-stop increments from full stop to full stop shutter speeds without rounding. It never happens with Canon's system. Whereas with the more traditional numbers that we use, that rounding situation comes up kind of all the time. Okay, so now that I've outlined what the discovery is, let me talk about how much this doesn't matter. And that's really what it comes down to. It doesn't matter. Uh, for normal photography uses, etc. The, the difference is completely meaningless. So for example, the difference, th there ends up being sort of two cases that happen, a better case and a worse case. So for shutter speeds, 125th of a second and faster, the difference between the shutter speed that Canon uses and the shutter speed that you would expect from the normal value that you see sort of presented works out to be 34 thousandths of a stop. So 0.034 stops. Now to put some perspective on how photographically irrelevant this is, Profoto makes really high-end studio strobes. If you're a photographer, you probably have heard of them. Their strobes allow you to control the brightness in 10th stop increments. So three times less, or it's a three time larger jump in brightness that Profoto is making compared to the error that your that Canon has, is having in this situation. Canon's higher end cameras, such as the EOS R5 or R3 and 1DX, have a auto uh, exposure meter adjustment that they can tune the meter in eighth stop increments, uh, plus or minus a stop in eighth stop increments. Here again, that's. 0.125 of a stop, and that's four times roughly larger than the error that is imposed by this thing from a normal a normal exposure or normal shutter speed to the shutter speed that Canon's using. Now, the bad range, the worse range, is from a 15th to a 60th of a second. So a 15th is a 16th, a 30th is a 32nd, a 60th is a 64th. In this case, the error is only zero, is, it's, it's worse, it's 0 0.93 stops or 93 thousandths of a stop. So it's still not as big of an error or as big of a jump or change as the minimum setting that Profoto makes 
or that Canon has for adjustments on their camera. Uh, so basically, the short of it is this. If I'm standing next to somebody who isn't shooting a Canon camera and their camera is using the traditional shutter speeds. Now, I don't know where this applies in the industry. I only know this is the case on Canon's cameras because that's what I have and I've tested with. Nikon, Sony, Panasonic, all the other companies could be doing the exact same thing. And I don't know because I don't have their gear. But assume they aren't for a second. And if I'm standing next to you and you're shooting, say, a Nikon and your camera is actually shooting at a 30th of a second and I put in the same shutter speed, aperture, etc. settings on my camera, I'm never going to be able to tell a difference between the two cameras' images based on the, if the, the difference or the error or whatever you want to call it that happens in the shutter speed. In fact, to point out or to underscore just how insignificant and irrelevant this is if you've been shooting canon since at least 2008 this has already been your norm and your reality uh, so i went back in the process of testing this and looked at metadata that was coming off of my 1d mark iii from 2008 and it was it putting in it it was producing the same metadata apparently using the same shutter speeds that my R5 is using today. Personally, I think that this actually goes back all the way to the introduction of the EOS platform in the mid 1980s, uh, possibly even with the T90 in the mid 1980s for a variety of reasons that I'm not going to get into in this video. But if you're interested in a way technical thing on computers and exposure and whatnot, uh, check out the extended discussion that I'll link at the end of this video. Now, that said, there are two places where this comes up. Uh, or could come up. So one of them is when you're shooting video and you're dealing with flicker because you're shooting at a frame rate that is not the frame or that is not an integer multiple of the flicker frequency of the lighting in the place that you're at. Now, I say that, but in all the testing I did for my video talking about flicker, I could not actually get this to be a problem under proper or traditional or normal lighting. I could create the problem using a custom built PWM controlled LED light where I could put it into a, a situation where it was not necessarily representative of how real lights flicker. But if I went around to the um, LED, just the regular commercial LEDs that I have, say, as track lighting or the fluorescent LEDs that I have, or LEDs, the fluorescent lamps that I have in uh, various places or even just setting up a, a fluorescent lamp to test with, I couldn't actually create a problem with this. So in general, video shooters don't need to worry about this, even though your video for shutter speed might actually be a 64th of a second, not a 60th of a second. Uh, where this kind of comes in and why I'm only mentioning, why I'm mentioning this with respect to video is that there is, of course, always the possibility of running into a light that the camera just doesn't get along with that other cameras do. And this could be why that's happening. Uh, but again, I think that's going to be a very niche, tiny edge case situation that that turns into the case. The other place that this becomes an issue is where I ran into it, which is measuring something specific in the time domain, which brings me to why I'm actually talking about this in the first place. I'm working on a project to look at rolling shutter performance on Canon's cameras. And the method that I'm using requires knowing the exposure time and knowing the exposure time very or fairly precisely. I mean, you, you could ignore it and you can round it and you can just say that's good enough, but I'd like to actually know what the exposure time is and not the, uh, you know, some random thing. Uh, so this led me down two paths uh, to look at shutter speeds and just in general and try to figure out what was going on. Uh, so first of all is... I'm lazy and my computer is really good at counting things. Uh, my computer could do hundreds of frames worth of calculations for rolling shutter testing in the time it takes me to do one frame by hand. So I want to have my computer do that. 
Uh, part of that process is reading metadata out of the files and the... Uh, so I started looking at Canon still and video files to figure out what metadata I needed to read to be able to get the exposure times for those files. And this is where I ran into the first thing that prompted me into this discussion. So in Canon video and still files, I found four different exposure time settings or shutter speed settings stored in the metadata. Now, some of those were the numbers that you would expect, 1 4,000th, 1 60th, etc. The others were these off numbers, the 1 40 96th or the 1 64th that prompted this whole discussion. Okay, that got me thinking. Is there something I could test? Oh, well, actually, that got me thinking about the fact that there's, as I mentioned, these weird discontinuities in the shutter speed ranges that we normally use. So uh, 15 should be 16 seconds, a 15th should be a 16th, a 25th, a 1 125th should be 1 1 28th, that kind of thing. Uh, so I started sort of poking around at this stuff and thinking, can I find something that I could test to put you know, some numbers to this? Fast shutter speeds are problematic. E even though we have sync speeds, uh, you know, shutter speeds slower than the sync speed, it's just hard to time a fast shutter speed accurately, uh, with at least with the equipment I have. Uh, however, we have two shutter speeds that actually are perfect for this situation for me to test. That's 15 and 30 seconds. So. According to the predictions based on what I'm saying that Canon's doing, 15 seconds should actually be 16 seconds and 30 seconds should actually be 32 seconds. That's an error of one or two seconds compared to the stated uh, or displayed shutter speed. And a, a second or two is actually something that's well within our margin as people to be able to time and test with a stopwatch. So I pulled out a stopwatch and on my phone actually, and I timed it. And quite unsurprisingly, considering that I'm making this video, although I was very surprised at the time, the exposure times that I actually arrived at were 16 seconds and 32 seconds respectively. So the camera was doing what I was predicting is a power of two, not what you would expect if you'd use the traditional uh, time, you know, traditional times. Uh, now, because I like to be thorough and note all of the methodology. Uh, I did shoot this in electronic first curtain shutter mode on my R5. I use the soft click that the R5 makes at the start of the exposure to start my timer. I use the mechanical shutter closing or the start of the mechanical shutter closing at the end of the uh, exposure to stop my timer. Neither that click or the mechanical shutter are a second long. And in fact, the uh, camera was set to one shot. I'm a rear button focusing user, so there's no autofocus delay involved. And all of this, I went back and looked at after doing it with a stopwatch, I went back and said, well, wait a minute, let's look at this with a little bit more precision. So I flipped my phone around, switched it to video, 60 frames per second. This gives me an error of 16 and a half milliseconds per frame, but more or less. And I retimed the whole thing, recording it on video and using the frame counts to actually do the timing. And that's what you're looking at here. So with that done, I then went and looked at the other camera that I have readily ac ready access to, which are my old 5D Mark IVs. Uh, presuming if Canon's doing this in the R5, my question was, well, what if this is something new or is this something new or is this something that's not new? So tested it on the 5D Mark IVs, they did the exact same thing. So this is obviously not complete and comprehensive testing of all the shutter speeds on the camera, uh, but it's sufficient for me to assume that the cameras are using powers of two shutter speeds and not the actual shutter speeds that the, the says on the tin. Uh, so a 125th of a second is really 128th of a second, a 15th is really a 16th, a 30th is a 32nd, so on and so forth. Of course, as all these things end up being, whenever I get into one of these projects, this just raises so many more questions for me to either look into, and this is why this spirals out of control so off, more often than not for me. Uh, so the first question that I had are, is video sp are video shutter speeds on the R5 used to doing the same thing as the still shutter speeds are? And the answer appears to be yes. I did some 
very simplistic testing, specifically, again, using this LED light that I keep talking about. Uh, camera was set to a 50 frames per second, a 60th of a second, and then I tweaked the LED's frequency and duty cycle to create a situation where I definitely would have flicker. And I had flicker at 120 hertz, but not at 128 hertz. Uh, 128 hertz would be two flickers every 64th of a second, which would indicate that the camera was exactly using a 64th of a second. Now, again, I want to reiterate this light is not representative of the reality of shooting under any kind of lights in any kind of situations. And if I take the camera with the same settings of 50 frames per second, a 60th of a second, or even 125th of a second for that matter, and I go put it under regular commercial LED lights, I don't get any flicker problems with this configuration. So this does go to underscore the point that I've made in the previous video about there is margin. The, this isn't, that doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, when you're dealing with flicker, you just have to be good enough. And it's very clear that all of this is good enough. Now, this also raised the question in my mind of, does Canon Cinema EOS cameras do this as well? And the answer to that is, I don't know. I do have an R5C. I could very easily, well, I could reconfigure the R5C to look into this. However, when push came to shove, I have my R5C configured exactly the way I want it in 60 hertz mode. Switching it to 50 hert mode means I have to make a lot of or make some configuration changes to get it back to the way I want it when I'm done. And I'd rather not do that just to test this on cinema cameras, especially given the fact that I don't see any flicker problems anywhere. And given the fact that on Canon cinema cameras, there is a clear scan shutter mode that gives you very, very fine control over the shutter speeds that the camera is using and if you run into flicker problems, you can always flip into that and clear up any flicker problem or pretty much any flicker problem uh, with that, regardless of what the is going on with the light source. Third question that I ended up asking myself is, is does this apply to any other brands? Like what's Nikon, Sony, et cetera doing? Well, obviously, as I said, I don't have any Nikon or Sony or Panasonic gear to test with, so I can't test it directly. I did make a cursory attempt to look at this in that I have uh, meta or I have images taken on some Nikon gear, specifically the Z9 and the D500. So I went and looked at the metadata that Nikon includes on their cameras, and they don't include the same metadata that Canon does. Uh, specifically, the the metadata that was saying on Canon cameras that they were, you know, the, the target shutter time or target exposure time was 1 64th of a second or whatever. Uh, Nikon doesn't include that, so I don't know. Uh, I could see, like, I don't want to jump to a conclusion on this and say Nikon isn't doing it. I don't want to jump to a conclusion and say that they are, they could be, they couldn't be. Uh, without actually performing testing, I don't know. Uh, so on that note, if you do have Nikon gear and you're interested in looking at this or you just decide that you're going to test it and you do the 30, uh, 15 or 30 second stopwatch tests with your camera, leave a comment in the discussion below and let me know what your camera's doing. So like what model and what your camera actually did. Uh, I'm interested, uh, you know, this is something, again, from a, a functional standpoint, it's a, a, a meaningless difference to the whole thing. But from a like just curiosity standpoint, I, I'd really like to know kind of what's going on. So with that said, I'm going to wrap this up at this point. As I said, I will have a more technical discussion on some of the things that fell out of this, largely because I thought they were interesting. And so I wanted to talk about them, not necessarily because they were useful for photographers, uh, but that's why it's a separate video uh, coming up shortly. So if you found this interesting, let me know by hitting that thumbs up button. If this kind of thing seems to be your, like it might be your kind of thing, please consider subscribing if you're not already. And as always, Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.